Hello fledglings, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Lemon, but you can call me Soul, and today I'll be talking about some Wings of Fire head cannons. Before we get into the video, I just want to clarify, this video is not meant to rewrite Wings of Fire or imply that I'm a better author or more creative than 2ET Sutherland or the Wings of Fire fandom as a whole. I am not better, although I've been making my own dragon stories for six years now and have grown used to being creative and doing my own stuff. With so many Wings of Fire fans and fan characters and so little headcanons, OCs and AUs tend to be pretty samey samey. So I'm making this to help inspire you guys and let you guys know that you can stray from the canon a little bit. I'd also like to clarify that I'm using most of these in my own little mostly private AU, but I give everyone full permission to use these headcans for their own AUs or even their own fully original stories. That being said, let's get into the headcanons. Skywings' religious and cultural emphasis on the sky and flying means that wings are very important to them. This causes them to view additional pairs of wings as a symbol of wealth and superior bloodlines. Two pairs are better than one, lean into nobility and royalty to purposely mate with hive slash silk wings to hopefully give their children the additional wit and genes. This starts taking place 50 to 100 years after the main book series. They can also hire animus dragons to enchant their children to have extra pair of wings, but this is less common due to how rare animus magic is. Animus induced secondary wings are seen as much better than hybrid induced secondary wings, as it gives them two pairs of wings without the disadvantage of having to find and mate with a hive slash silk wing and having hybrid children. Extra, the emphasis on the wings also leads them to wear wing centric accessories such as wing rings, silk drapings, embedded jewels, etc., etc. Nightwings use star based navigation methods frequently, much preferring that over traditional geographical maps. They've mapped out several constellations, total of 177, as illustrated in a Nightwing's Guide to Navigation, based on mythology, animals, and history. The most notable one being an hourglass based on Darkstalker's Soul Reader, which points north and is by far the most useful for navigation. They are taught which one is which and how to navigate based on these during their second year of school. This has nearly the same priority as reading and writing, and is a lasting tradition started during the Darkstalker Age. Extra. They are the only tribe with compasses and frequently brag about this. Extra, extra, the current generation travels frequently, seemingly unable to get enough after spending their whole lives on the volcano. Extra, 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 these guys are Zodiac girls. 100% Zodiac girls. Some Skywings, mostly royalty and other noble families, have feathers on their back, chest, and wings. And all Rainwings have feathers on their necks, tails, and backs. These are used for warmth for the Skywings and made attraction for Rainwings. They are not fully fledged, pun intended, feathers, but are closer to dinosaur proto feathers. Simpler and more hair like than bird feathers. Rainwing feathers do not change colors, but there are enough scales to still provide for good communication. Rainwings often have very bright coloration, usually primary colors with darker accents. Skywings have much more muted colors, often a darker shade of their main scale color. Extra. Feathered species call their children fledglings instead of dragonettes. Extra, extra, Skywings used to all have feathers, but with the evolution of fire breath, they've become all but useless. Royalty and nobility are very careful with who they mate with, and therefore continue to have these feathers. Most animus hatchlings are instructed, or rather forced, to enchant a bracelet to make it to where they can only use their magic when they fully intend to, or when their guardian slash teacher allows them to create the desired spell. This is to prevent younger or more impulsive dragons from mistakenly hurting someone or doing too many enchantments, causing them to lose their soul. This creates a safer environment for animus dragons and for the family of those animus dragons, but it also creates a sense of helplessness and dependency for the dragons with these enchantments. They can always take the bracelets off, but are often punished for doing so. Bracelets are the choice accessory because earrings shouldn't be given to younger fledglings, and all other accessories have a somewhat high chance of falling off and getting lost. Donovan94 has a similar concept in their Broken Fragments fanfiction. Go check it out! Arranged marriages are very common in noble and royal families, especially the Mudwing Kingdom, the Seawick Kingdom, and the Nightwing Kingdom. These are often arranged to keep the standard of looks for noble families, but are occasionally done to keep peace between noble families or kingdoms, sometimes resulting in hybrid children. Mudwings will pair genetically stronger and larger dragons together to pass on their strength to their children. Seawings will try to keep the traditional look of royalty, and Nightwings just want peace between large families. Extra, Skywings' breeding program does not apply to this as in not a lifelong bond such as marriage. 
Seawings do not learn to talk verbally until they are adults, when it is safe for them to spend large amounts of time outside the water. Until then, they will speak aquatic at all times, including while out of water. They have highly exaggerated body language to compensate for the lack of tone in aquatic, often intimidating other species with their exaggeration. Extra, they don't learn to fly until they're an adult, but they learn very quickly, usually in about a week or even a day or two, because they use their wings while swimming and are used to making the movements and using the muscles required for flight. Nightwings are highly religious, believing in a heaven-like afterlife that they can only reach if their bodies are laid out under the stars and are allowed to be taken by nature. During this time, they are still a ghost tied to the body and cannot ascend until the body is fully decomposed. After they meet all the criteria, they will go to one of the three levels of heaven, numbers based on the moons, one for royalty, one for nightwings with powers, or one for the common citizens. These levels are portrayed as bright, sparkling kingdoms of gold and marble with stars and scrolls everywhere. If they aren't laid out under the stars, their souls will decompose with their bodies. Extra, mudwings have a similar concept, but are much less focused on it. Mudwings and Skywings' culture focuses heavily around the sun. The sun is a symbol of happiness and is used in jewelry, paintings, etc., etc. to represent luck, happiness, love, and prosperity. Instead of three moons, they say my sun, negative connotation, or sun's light, positive connotation. Examples. My sun, this is a disaster. Sun's light, we're alive. They have several sun-centric festivals around the year, the biggest ones happening on the summer and winter solstice. Eclipses are viewed as horrible, terrifying warnings of danger. Mudwings have necklaces with a shattered scale from each of their sibs and will wear them at all times, replacing the scales as their sibs grow about every other season. Scales from dead sibs will be heavily treasured and kept on the necklace to show that the other sibs continue to grow while the dead one doesn't. Extra, outer ring ice wings will do this with their parents and children. Mudwing royalty hosts the North Mark at the beginning of every season a five-day market where dragons of every kingdom travel to display and sell their wares. These markets were started 300 years ago and is a standing tradition to this day. Princesses are occasionally told to plan and marriage these as practice for when they'll be queen. These are highly important to mudwing merchants and they're often very relevant. Want to make some headcans of your own but are lost in how to do so? Here's some tips. 1. Use real-life cultures or traditions to inspire, such as Egyptian culture for sandwings or Roman traditions for skywings. Make sure you do your research and avoid untrue stereotypes. 2. Use ideas from other stories, such as stuff from your favorite books or movies. This could be like creating a religion reminiscent of Star Clan, warriors, or set jobs slash talents they are given upon hatching, Disney fairies. 3. Write down everything you like to see in stories and fictional worlds and figure out which ones you think could fit Wings of Fire. And 4. Take inspiration from other people's Wings of Fire fan fictions, characters, and headcanon. With permission, of course. And this is all I have for today. Make sure to comment telling everyone your own headcanons, subscribe to see more, and leave one nice comment on someone's artwork today. Bye!